Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial where I'll be showing you how to convert between ratios and equations to solve some of the harder ratio problems. Let's start off with a question. The sign at the pick and mix stand says they charge 5p per gram of sweets. If W is equal to the weight in grams and C is equal to the cost in pence, find the formula for W in terms of C. Now this hasn't been included in the question, but assuming we were told that the variables W and C are directly proportional, well then we could use methods used in the previous tutorials to find a formula for W in terms of C. So assuming that these variables are directly proportional, then as seen before, we can write this mathematical statement, W fish C, and therefore W is equal to K times by C, where K would be a constant to be found. Now reading the question, we're told that they charge 5p per gram. In terms of the variables W and C, we can interpret this that W, the weight, is equal to 1, when C, the cost, is equal to 5. And so we can sub these values into this equation, giving us that 1 is equal to K times by 5, and dividing both sides of the equation by 5, we get that K is equal to 1 over 5. So subbing this newfound value of k back into this equation, we would get a general formula of w is equal to 1 over 5 times by c. Now, as mentioned before, we weren't actually told the fact that w and c were directly proportional. But in this particular case, it was correct to assume that the variables are directly proportional. And this is based on the fact that 1 gram costs 5p, so therefore 2 grams would cost 10p, and three grams will cost 15p and so on. And so you can see that the cost and the weight would be directly proportional as it would satisfy the definition that we learned in the previous tutorial. As one quantity increases, the other quantity will also increase at a constant rate. So another way we can solve this problem and find the formula is by using ratios. And in previous tutorials, we have discussed how strongly linked ratios is with proportion. So let's see how we can use this approach to arrive to the same answer. Now, given the fact that the pick and mix stand says that they charge 5p per gram of sweets, what do you think the ratio between W to C is? Well, for every one gram, it would cost you five pence. So the ratio between W to C would be one to five, okay? Now, using this ratio, the question is, how do we then work out a formula which relates W in terms of C? Now, what we're going to do is using this ratio, we're going to write a series of different equations. And let's see if you notice the pattern. OK, so given the fact that the ratio between W to C is one to five, we can say that one gram is equal to five P and therefore two grams is equal to 10 P. All we did was just multiply this equation by two and therefore three grams would be equal to 15 P, which we get by multiplying this equation by three. Now by assessing these three equations, hopefully you can see that in each equation, the cost in pence is always five times more than the weight in grams, okay? So just looking at the numbers here to get from one to five, we needed to multiply one by five. To get from two to 10, we need to multiply two by five and to get from 3 to 15, we needed to multiply 3 by 5. So the pattern that we can see is that in order to get the cost, we need to multiply the weight by 5. Okay. And so therefore, the cost is equal to 5 times W. And I'll show you why I've written 1 times C in just a few moments. So now we have this equation, we can simply find the formula for W in terms of C by dividing both sides of this equation by five to get that W is equal to one over five times by C, which was exactly the same formula we got using this method, okay? Now the key part that helped us to find the formula was deriving this equation from the ratio. Now we did this by writing a list of equations that we got from the ratios and noticing a pattern between the variables. Now there is, of course, a quicker way to doing this, which I'd like to introduce you to now. So if you set out your ratio in this way, where we've got the ratio between two variables over 
the ratio between their values. All you have to do is cross multiply and put an equal sign in the middle, okay? And that's why we have here one times by C is equal to five times by W. And you can see that within just one step, you're able to quickly determine the equation, which then allows you to solve the problem. Okay, so let's have a look at more examples of converting between ratios and equations, okay? So here we have the ratio between A to B is four to one. So if we cross multiply and put an equal sign in the middle, the equation that we'd get is that therefore one times A is equal to four times B, okay? Another example, the ratio P to Q is four to seven. So cross multiplying and putting an equal sign, we get that seven P is equal to four Q. Here's another example. The ratio between X to Y is two to four. So to get the equivalent equation, we would cross multiply to get that four X is equal to two Y, okay? So let's now use these methods to solve some exam questions. So here we're told that the ratio y plus x to y minus x is equivalent to the ratio k to 1. And we're asked to show that y is equal to x times by k plus 1 divided by k minus 1. So I'll give you a few moments to pause the video to have a go at this one. And when you come back, we'll check out the solution. Welcome back. So given the fact that the ratio y plus x to y minus x is equivalent to the ratio k to one, if we set it out as follows, then from this ratio, we can derive the equation one times by y plus x is equal to k times by y minus x by using the cross multiplication method and putting an equal sign in the middle, okay? So now we've derived the equation from this ratio. All we need to do is make y the subject of this equation, okay? So let's first of all expand the brackets to get that y plus x is equal to ky minus kx. I'm now going to group like terms on either side of the equation. I'm going to do this by subtracting y from both sides and adding kx to both sides to give us that x plus kx is equal to ky minus y. Since we need to make y the subject of this equation, it makes sense to factorize the right hand side to get the x plus kx is equal to y times by k minus one. And if we divide both sides of the equation by k minus one, we get that y is equal to x plus kx divided by k minus one. Now comparing this with the equation we've been asked to show, by looking at the numerator of the right hand side, if we factor out x from the numerator, we get that y is equal to x times by k plus one divided by k minus one as required. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. P and Q are two numbers such that P is greater than Q. When you subtract five from P and subtract five from Q, the answers are in the ratio five to one. When you add 20 to P, and add 20 to Q, the answers are in the ratio five to two. And we've been asked to find the ratio between P to Q, leaving our answer in its simplest form. So I'm gonna leave you with a few moments to pause the video to have a go at this problem. And if you'd like to skip straight to the solution, feel free to do so. Welcome back. Now, our goal is to find P and Q using the information given in the question. So let's start off with the first part of the question, which says that when you subtract five from P and subtract five from Q, the answers will come in the ratio five to one. So from this statement, we can write the following, that the ratio between P minus five to Q minus five is equivalent to five to one. And using our cross multiplication method, we can derive an equation from this ratio as follows. 
1 times by p minus 5 is equal to 5 times by q minus 5. Now at this point, knowing that we need to find p and q in order to find the ratio, well here we have one equation and two unknowns. So using just this information alone, we can't find the value of p and q. But the next part of this question helps us because it says that when you add 20 to p and add 20 to q, the answers are in the ratio 5 to 2. Okay, so given this information, we can write the following, that the ratio between p plus 20 to q plus 20 is equivalent to 5 to 2. And so using our cross multiplication method, we can therefore say that 2 times by p plus 20 is equal to 5 times by q plus 20. So at this stage, we now have two different equations and two unknowns, p and q, which means that we can find p and q by solving a simultaneous equation. Okay, so for this first equation, let's first of all expand the brackets to give us p minus 5 is equal to 5q minus 25. And when solving simultaneous equations, we're used to having unknowns on one side of the equation and the constant value on the other side of the equation. So I'm just going to subtract both sides by 5q and add 5 to both sides to give us p minus 5q is equal to negative 20. And we can call this our first equation, equation 1. For the second equation, if we expand the brackets, we get 2p plus 40 is equal to 5q plus 100. And therefore, 2p minus 5q is equal to 60, which we get from subtracting both sides by 5q and subtracting both sides of the equation by 40, giving us equation 2. So if we just write the equations one on top of the other, hopefully you can see that we can use the elimination method to solve this simultaneous equation. By doing equation 2 minus equation 1, we'll be able to eliminate the q variable of this simultaneous equation, okay? So doing equation 2 minus equation 1, 2p minus p is equal to p, minus 5q minus minus 5q is equal to 0, be careful here, and this will eliminate the q variables, and 60 minus minus 20 is equal to 80, and therefore p is equal to 80. So now we've found p to find q, we need to sub this value into any of the equations, we'll choose equation 1, and we get 80 minus 5q is equal to minus 20. If we add 5q to both sides and add 20 to both sides, we get that 100 is equal to 5q. And dividing both sides of the equation by 5, we get that q is equal to 20. So now we have the value of p and the value of q. First of all, just checking the values. Well, p is equal to 80, which is greater than 20 which agrees with the statement that p is greater than q. Now, since we have the values of p and q, we can write the ratio between p to q to be 80 to 20. Now, since both parts of this ratio are divisible by 20, we can simplify this ratio by dividing both parts by 20 to get that the simplified ratio of p to q is equivalent to 4 to 1. Okay, so let's have a look at the last question. Here we're told that a, b, c, and d are integers. 4a is equal to 5b, c is equal to 3b over 4. The ratio a to d is equal to 3 to 5. And we've been asked to find the ratio between a to b to c to d. So if you'd like to have a go at this question, do feel free to pause the video. And when you come back, I'll be going through the work solution. Welcome back. So for this question, we've been given some equations and some ratios which contains the integers a, b, c, and d. And what we need to do is use this information to find the ratio a to b to c to d. So we're going to do this question by using this information to work out the ratios between some of these different integers and use those ratios to form the final ratio a to b to c to d. 
Now, previously, we've looked at how to convert from a ratio into an equation. But in this example, we'll need to do it the other way around and convert from an equation to a ratio. So starting with the first equation, 4a is equal to 5b. Bearing in mind the cross multiplication method we use to convert from ratios to equations, what do you think the ratio between a to b would be? Well, a to b would be 5 to 4. And from this, we can see that if we were to cross multiply and put an equal sign, we would get this equation. For the next equation, well, we can make life a little bit easier by multiplying both sides by 4 to get that 4c is equal to 3b. And given this equation, we can infer that the ratio between c to b is 3 to 4. Okay. So from these equations, we were able to work out the ratios A to B and C to B. Now, if you look at both of these ratios, you'll notice that B is the common part between these ratios. And B happens to represent the same number of parts in each ratio, four parts, which means that we can combine these two ratios to get the A to B to C is five to four to three. So let's now compare this ratio with the one given in the question, A to D is equivalent to three to five. Comparing these two ratios, you'll see that the common part between the two ratios is A. However, the number of parts of A is different in both ratios. So in order to combine the ratios, we need the same number of parts. And this can be achieved by finding the lowest common multiple between five and three, which is 15. We then need to manipulate the ratios to make sure that the number of parts for A in each ratio is equal to 15. So if we multiply each part of this ratio by three, we get the following, that A to B to C is equivalent to 15 to 12 to nine. And if we multiply each part of this ratio by five, we get that the ratio A to D is equivalent to 15 to 25. So by manipulating these ratios, we now have the same number of parts for A in both ratios. And so we can combine the ratios to get the following, that A to B to C to D is 15 to 12 to nine to 25, which cannot be simplified any further. Okay. So in this tutorial, we've looked at the relationship between direct proportion and ratios. We've also looked at a quick method for converting between ratios and equations and have used those methods to solve harder ratio problems. So I hope that was useful for you. Keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.